Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build these four different enchanting setup designs. The first one we're going to be building here is this gazebo with an azalea leaf topped roof. All of the items inside of this chest is what we need to make the first build, some azalea leaves as well as some flowering azalea leaves and these have been rounded up just to make sure you got enough for the canopy that we're going to be building. We then have some oak planks, oak stairs and oak fences, as well as 8 barrels, 8 walls and 2 lanterns, and then all of our enchanting stuff at the bottom here. The first thing we're going to do is make a 5x5 square using our oak planks here. So we're going to have a line of 5, come forward by another one, then a third one, then a fourth one, and lastly a fifth line. So we should have 25 blocks in this square shape. And now we can very simply place down three oak stairs in the middle of all four sides, just like this. And what we're going to do for each of the four corners is place down two barrels next to our stairs, except we would like to place them in upside down so we have a different texture here on top. So what we need to do is come to this corner block, dig down by two blocks and place them down upside down on that block. So when we pillar back up again, they look like this. And crouching as you place the next blocks here, two brick walls on top of those barrels with one, two and three oak fences on top of the brick walls. And you can repeat this for all of the other three corners. So now we can start work on the canopy and the first thing I like to do is just make the base shape of what our canopy is going to look like. So having that ring of azalea leaves all the way around and then filling the roof in. So it should look like this to begin with but obviously that doesn't look very great. We need to bush it up a little bit so I'm going to start by placing them on the sides of the block. Some above and some below obviously making all of the sides look different and not completely the same. We don't want this canopy to be symmetrical and once you've done that for all four sides we can then mess up the top a little bit by placing some just above the roof of the canopy and then we can actually go underneath and break some blocks and place others and try to just make a droopy effect you can even add in more to the sides if you feel like it needs it so this already looks better than what we had to begin with the last thing we have to do is just add in some of the flowering azalea leaves mainly because i think they look pretty and it's going to improve the look of the gazebo so now we have our canopy all done, the next thing we can do to make the leaves here look a little bit better as well as all of the other ones in Minecraft is to install this resource pack from VanillaTweaks.net. It's the bushy leaves one and it just makes it look so much better, I would highly recommend using it, I think it's great. So now we need to build the enchanting setup itself and of course we're going to need our enchanting table right in the center of this platform and we're going to place in one, two, three and four bookshelves in all four of the corners like that. So make a corner shape and then one more on top. So one, two, three, four, you get the idea. That's all we're doing. It's one more bookshelf than you need but it keeps the symmetry. What we can also do is place down a grindstone and an anvil on two of the bookshelves like that and then just pick another one of them, doesn't really matter which one, let's say this bookshelf to display a chest. If you want to keep the symmetry maybe, you could place one over here too, but I like just the singular one. And then what we need to do on top of two of the bookshelves, maybe ones that don't have leaves on top of them, we're going to place down two lanterns just to get this place lit up a little bit. Moving on to the second design, which is actually this enchanting tent. Once again, here is your resource list for this build. We're going to need almost a stack of white wool, 63 will be enough, as well as all of these spruce variants that we're going to be using as well as nine barrels, eight stripped dark oak logs, a lantern and a chain, and once again, all of our enchanting items. First things first, we're going to grab our white wool, or a different color if you would like, I guess that part can be up to you, but I'm going to start by placing in two white wool blocks, one there, leave five blocks in between, and place another one here, and then we're just going to make each of these five blocks long, like this. This is going to be the front of the tent. Hello sheep, I'm building out of your fur. I'm guessing you're not a fan. <laughs> so once we've got this done, we'll just pick one of the sides for now. We're going to add in another line of five on top, then a line of three. Then we're going to add in a temporary block here and just add in one in front of that space, just like this. Then we're going to have another five on top of those with three more in the middle here. 
then we're going to come around to the back and go one, two. We're going to leave these blocks in place this time. And then the last thing we can do above this central singular block, we're just going to have one more. So this is what one of the sides look like. We can then copy it around to this side too. The last thing to do is just to place a wall block in the center here and bring it out by two blocks on either side to finish off all of our white wall placing. And now we're going to come to the front of the build where we want our entrance to be. And we're going to start off by placing in an upside down spruce stair at the top there, as well as two regular ones on the side of it, just like that. We're then going to have two upside down stairs next to it with two regular ones coming out just like that. And we're pretty much just following the wall pattern down here. So the next blocks need to then be spruce planks. And then we're going to have two more upside down with two more regular out the back once again. And then lastly, we're just going to have two full blocks like this. And instead of another full block at the bottom, just to make it look a little bit nicer, we're going to have some upside down stairs like that. In fact, these can actually be changed so they're rotated to the front of the build. I personally think that looks a little bit better. But now moving around to the back entrance here, which is not going to be an entrance at all. We're actually going to entirely close it off. So this one is going to look a little bit different. We're going to start off with some more upside down stairs at the top. Just one, in fact. But then we're going to have two more here on these blocks. Then two more here on these. And then two more at the bottom. So it should look like this. And then what we're going to do is have a spruce plank here and here, as well as two more on this side, giving us this shape. And all that's left to do is place in some more stairs. So we're going to have one, two, and then three, and then going down the other side, one, two, and three. So the outline for the back should look like this. So now we're going to fill all of this in because we don't really want to be able to see through it. And we're going to do that using some stripped dark oak logs and barrels. And the first thing we're going to do from this second stair, three blocks up from this white wall block, we're going to have three horizontal barrels. You need to crouch as you place them just like that. And then we can actually step inside and underneath these two outer barrels, we're going to have two regular barrels facing forward with two more below it, as well as two more above it like so so that from the outside we're once again utilizing this back texture and then what we need to do then is just basically fill the rest in using our strip dark oak logs so we eventually end up with something that looks like this and the final thing to do in front of all of these barrels here is just place down some spruce fences and we can also place in four more for the front two here and two here now we just need to come up to the top of the build here where we're going to place in two spruce trap doors on top of the upside down stairs. Then we're going to have two spruce slabs, two more trap doors and a single slab in the middle just to connect the two sides like that. We can also pop underneath here, place down two more white wall blocks on those spots and have a line of spruce trap doors going across to the strip dark oak log. Before we start placing in any of the enchanting stuff, the first thing we're going to do is hang a chain down with a lantern underneath from that stair below just so we can get a little bit of lighting in here. So first things first, we're going to start with the bookshelves by having a line of five blocks across the back just like that. We're going to have two more here and two more here. And then we're going to have one, two and three here on either side for 15 in total. So if we place our enchanting table in the middle, that will give us 30 levels. We're also going to place a chest in the middle block here. And of course, you can still access all of these barrels for some extra storage. But we're also going to have our anvil and of course, our grindstone here on those two spots. And then the very last thing to do is just add in six spruce trap doors to cover up the top of those bookshelves. Now that the tent is finished, we can move on to our next design, which is actually an amethyst shard with an enchanting table inside of it. This resource list is incredibly short. As you can see, we have all of our enchanting items at the bottom, two chains, a lantern, and then just two stacks of amethyst with some amethyst clusters too. This one is going to be a little bit different to the rest as we're going to actually build it inside out. So we're going to start with our enchanting table and bookshelves and build the amethyst up around it. So we got our enchanting table. My entrance is going to be here at the front on the diagonal. So pick wherever you want your entrance way to be and then stand on the table. And on these two blocks, we're going to place down two bookshelves. So we just want to remember this is our entrance. We're going to bring them up so they're too high and then add two more on each 
either side. So we get 12 in total. And then we're also going to add in two more here on either side for a total of 16, which once again will be enough for 30 levels. So this type of building isn't super easy to do unless you're used to it. We're basically going to try build a shard coming out of the ground. So if you just want to freehand it, please feel free to go ahead and skip on to the next one maybe <laughs> but what I'm gonna do is just show you how to place each individual block so you can make a shard identical to mine and the very first thing we need to do is basically cover up all of these bookshelves so we'll start by placing in could you guys move your your slightly in the way give me one second uh, as I was saying, we need to start by covering up all of the bookshelves. So we're going to have two here on either side of those outer ones. And then we're basically just going to go around and fill in the rest of these all the way around like so. So from above, it should look like this. Of course, remembering this is going to be the entrance way. What we can then do, starting from the right hand side over here, is place one amethyst block on top of this one. Two more here leave this one a single one here two more here leave this one as well as this one then a single one two more one here and leave this other one this time we're going to go around from left to right so starting on the left hand side bookshelf here we're going to place down one two and three then come around to the back of this block and place down two more we're then going to have a single one here and then above this bookshelf one two and three and then above this block, we're going to have one, two, three, and four. And then from this block, we're going to go one and two, and then another two here. Hopefully, this is easy enough to follow along with. I'm really sorry if it's not, but pursuing forward, the next thing to do, starting on the right-hand side from this block, we're going to place in one and then two. And then we can come over to the left-hand side, and we're going to have two blocks here one block here with another one just below it so kind of the same as what we have on the other side and then we just need a temporary block here and then two more four blocks like that so we kind of have this art shape at the front now we can come into the center here and we're just going to do a very small section as i too am trying to copy this from my own screenshots it's definitely not the easiest <laughs> but we're going to have two blocks either side of this central amethyst block and then we're going to have one more on top of this right hand side one. And then we're going to have one here with another one above it. And then we're going to have one, two and three more. So it should look like this from the front. Now we can come around to the back of the shard and finish things up here. So we're going to just have a temporary block in that little middle section right there with a block behind it. So this one, hopefully you can locate that one okay. And once you've got that block, we're going to have three more blocks in front of it, or on top I should say, sorry, and one more on top of that one to make a plus shape what we've just placed down. And then we can turn around to this side and very simply have two more here. And that is the shard complete. Of course, if you're not really a fan of it and there's certain parts you don't like, maybe this is something I've considered changing. So possibly that corner is a bit rigid. You could always delete that. But then you got a bit of a staircase going on here. So I am going to keep it actually. So yeah, you're always welcome to go around and tweak it and change things incrementally. But there we go. That is the shard all done. For the most part, that is. There's still a couple of details left to add in, which is actually what I'm working on now. As you can see, I'm adding in some amethyst blocks to the floor and I think the best way to describe what I'm building here is the roots of the amethyst shard that we've just made sort of the little fragment shooting off around the thing that's protruding out of the ground so we don't just have that and that alone obviously we got a bit more in where the actual enchanting table is so it looks like it's been hollowed out almost and once we got all of the main blocks in we can then go around with our amethyst clusters which you harvest using a silk touch pickaxe and just put these on every now and again as much or as little as you want as for the inside you can actually come to the enchanting table here in the center and place down two chains and a lantern obviously only if you've done everything as i have here if not just find out a way to stick a lantern down <laughs> and then what we can do is place down our anvil and our grindstone just in front of these amethyst blocks to the side of the bookshelves so that you can access them for enchanting of course and then the last thing we can do is place a barrel here in this little nook that you should have if you've followed everything i've done if not just find a little section where you can hide some sort of storage and there is actually one last thing you can do maybe if you want to place in a few more of these amethyst clusters but i wouldn't go too overboard i think i may have already done that a bit too much on the outside and last but not least we have this ancient shrine enchanting setup 
And here is the resource list for that build. We have a lot of stone types in this one and we're just going to be building it out of the regular stone bricks for now and we're going to add in all of this texture later where we have some cobblestone, stairs and walls too, mossy cobble, mossy stone bricks and some cracked stone bricks. So I've rounded these up just to make sure you have enough but gather all of these stones together and you should have plenty. We then have five vines and some white stained glass panes as well as some purple stained glass panes. We also have 10 string, but you may need a little bit more. It's to halt the growth of these vines here. And then we have 64 dirt or just any other temporary block. And as always, all of our enchanting items at the bottom. We're going to start off with our chiseled stone bricks in each of the corners. All of these are five blocks apart. And then we're just going to grab our stone bricks. And we're just going to be using these for now and adding in the mossy and the cracked afterwards as well as everything else. So we're just going to connect all of these like so. And then on each of the sides, we're also going to add three more just coming outwards like that for all four of these all the way around. There we go. And then lastly, we can just fill in this central platform. Now what you can do for all four sides in between these chiseled blocks is actually add in another chiseled block in the center here and then just a stair in front of it. We're going to add two more stairs either side placed sideways so that they curve around a little bit and we're also going to have two more on those two spots and you can then do this three more times. So now we're going to build some of the pillars that are on top of these chiseled blocks and to do the ones that are raised up slightly, these four, all we need to do is add in a wall with a full block and then a stair pointing outwards and on the corner blocks here we're going to do a wall but this time just simply two full blocks. So now is where you can gather together all of your other stone types that we're going to be adding in. Of course, the slab and wall variants too. And we're just going to mix all of them into this regular stone brick here, making the build look nice and run down and very dilapidated. Now we can go ahead and add in our enchanting table in the center. Just line yourself up with the chiseled blocks. And we're going to go ahead and place the bookshelf diagonally in front of one of these walls here. It doesn't matter which one, it's just so we have the same starting point. And we're going to go around to the left here. So from this one on the left, we're going to place two bookshelves. Leave a gap, place down two more, then a single one here, and then two more here. Leave another gap, place down one, then place down two. Leave another gap, one, one, and then two more for a total of 15 bookshelves. And it's kind of in this mismatch pattern, bit all over the place, adding to the ruined feel of the entire build. We can then add our grindstone on the bookshelf that we started on over in the corner there. We're going to stick our anvil on the opposite side and then turn away from the anvil over on this block is where we're going to have our chest. Now we're going to go around adding in some white and purple glass panes and we're going to do this so that they end up looking like this. Little lines floating in the sky and when we add in enough of them it's going to have a really cool effect but the way I'm going to recommend you do this is grab a bunch of temporary blocks. I'm going to say dirt is a good one and then we're just going to pillar up, place one down, get rid of the blocks go somewhere else pillar up a bit higher maybe place in a different color so on and so forth just kind of going all over the place it's a really messy procedure <laughs> but at the end of the day as i said it's gonna look really cool when it's done So as you can see, we kind of get these magical floating particles, which I absolutely love. I think this looks really cool and definitely suits the build. You could also, if you are a fan of Harry Potter maybe, like they have in Hogwarts, you could maybe have some floating candles if this is possible. Yes, it is. <laughs> you can have some floating candles like this, light them, and that might have a really cool effect too. But I'm going to stick with the glass panes. It's probably a little bit easier, plus it's cheaper too. So all that's left to do now is add in some vines to make it look really overgrown. So mine are going to grow really quickly here because I have my random tick speed set to a bit higher. But I'd recommend you just place them on a couple of the pillars here. Maybe five of them, I think, is what I've just done there. Not too many, but uh, not too little. And over time, they will grow. And once they've reached a full growth and they've kind of stopped spreading all over 
over the place, you can then go around with some string and shorten the length of them to stop the growth. That way it's not completely overgrown, but we still get that vibe going on. So yeah, add in a bit of string here, there and everywhere, wherever you want to stop the growth of your vines. So there we go everybody, there is a tutorial for all four of my enchanting setup designs. I really hope you liked them, thank you ever so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.